in the exercises we've done previously, we've had symbols, components, all inserted into our schematic drawings. And luckily, we've actually had catalogue parts that we can go and find and add to the particular drawings we're working on. In this case, I've got a drawing open. It's called Catalogue Part Numbers. And you can see I've got a power block and a circuit connector bar there. First thing I'm going to do, project, right click, add the active drawing to the project and say yes to the project default values. As you can see, that's got an 03 against it as the sheet number. I'll just update that, make sure it's got the appropriate sheet number, which will be 004. And then what I'm going to do is start looking at how I catalog these particular parts. It's quite important that you know about this because sometimes when you're working with parts in a drawing, such as power blocks and circuit connectors, they might not be related to the project database. There might not be any catalog parts available. Now, if that's the case, let's say, for example, our power block hasn't got a catalog part there. What would happen is that would be in the drawing, but it would not become part of the bill of materials because it didn't have a catalog part to link it into the database. So let's look at that and how we would rectify that situation. If I select my power block there in the drawing and I right click and select edit component there on the flashlight system, all the information's there. There's the component tag, there's the description power block one. But if I go over here now to look up and click here, you'll see that there's nothing in the database. There's the MDB file, which is a Microsoft Access database relating to your electrical drawing. So how would I add to the database? How would I add some component catalog parts to the database? Well, you'll notice there's only one button highlighted, which is adding a catalog item. So if I click there, you'll see this great big dialog box appear just to the left there. I'm going to drag it so it's central on the screen. As you can see, I can select a catalogue that it comes from, of which there aren't any, for this particular power block, and I go in and I add the information I need. Now, in this particular instance, I'm not going to change anything. I don't want to change the database because I've got it all set up for training purposes right now. But if you were working in a live electrical project, you might have a power block that you're using on that project that is in a catalogue, as in a physical catalogue that you look through, either on the internet or it's on your desk. You can go in, list the catalogue, add it to the database, add the manufacturer, and so on and so forth. There's nothing to stop you typing in a catalogue there. It is a required field. You can see that by the asterisks and the bold type. As you add information, you can force the text into uppercase, which I always do. So you can tick that little box and it'll all update to uppercase, which is very useful. I'll click on Cancel there, and I'll click on Cancel again there in the Parts catalogue. And I'm going to cancel that also because I'm not going to change that power block in this case. What about our circuit connector though, here? If I click on that and right click and do an edit component, you'll see it is a Hubble manufacturer, catalog, assembly, item, all the information's there, connector one and it's on circuit one. I can add all of that information in, but the nice thing is when I go look up, it's already part of an existing catalog. So I can go and use any information from that catalogue, put it into my AutoCAD electrical drawing, and the information is there in the bill of materials because it's got a catalogue part number. I'll just cancel that because I don't want to change anything. Cancel that again. So that is how you work with these catalogue part numbers. They're very important because they link to the bill of materials. When you're pricing up your project, once you've drawn it all up, and all the circuits are linked and all the parts, components and schematics are ready, you need to be able to go to that bill of materials and make sure that everything is linked to the project. In order to do that, everything needs a catalog part number. So make sure that you check that, unlike our little power block here that hasn't got a catalog part number. So what we need to do is make sure that it does have a catalog part number by inserting the details into that dialog box I showed you. We're now going to look at terminal jumpers and associations. So what we've done, we've gone back to a JIC, Imperial American Standard Project. It's here, 08 Schematics JIC. I've got a drawing open, JIC Wiring Schematic 1. You may recognize it from previous videos in the course. And what we're going to do now is look at adding some terminal jumpers, some terminal connections to this particular part of the project. 
Before we do anything though, what we do is we select our project and get into the habit of right clicking and adding the active drawing to the project and applying the project default values. Again, I can't stress how important this is. It's very important to add the drawing to the project so that everything is linked together. So if I click on the plus sign now, there's my 001 JIC wiring schematic 1.dwg. You'll notice it's got a sheet number of 001. I've already placed that in the drawing. So we're all ready to go to add our terminal jumpers. If you've got something like this, a wiring ladder, so there's my rungs there, one, two, three, and so on. And you can see some of them are numbered based on how we set up the rungs and the ladder when we set this up in a new drawing. What I'm going to do now is go up to the schematic tab on the ribbon, and I'm going to select here multiple insert from the icon menu. Okay, so I click there, and it takes me to the icon menu as if I'd clicked on the icon menu on the left hand side of the panel in the ribbon. But what it's allowing me to do now is add multiple objects all in one go. There's my terminal icon there. And what I'm going to do now is select the terminal or connector I want to use. Now these are JIC, they're American Imperial Standard. I'm going to use a round symbol with the terminal number, that one there. You then get this weird prompt. It doesn't actually give you the option to put a symbol in just yet. What it's asking you to do is specify a component fence from a point. Now, if you've used AutoCAD before, the vanilla AutoCAD, you'll know that the fence command allows you to draw a line through a group of objects and apply a particular command to those objects selected by that line. This is exactly the same, but what you're doing now, those lines are smart lines that form your wires, and you're putting a fence through the wires where you want the component to go. So make sure that you've got your polar tracking on. That way you can get a nice vertical line. I've got snap and grid on there as well. I'm actually going to turn those off down there on the status bar. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click. And as I drag, look, there's my polar tracking locking in. So keep it vertical, the vertical line there. Can you see the green dash line indicating that polar tracking's on? Click there, and there's my component fence line. So two points going through those four rungs of the wiring ladder. I then press Enter to confirm, and it will prompt me do I want to keep that first terminal jumper? You can just see it highlighted here. I'm going to say yes to keeping that one by clicking on OK. Then the insert terminal symbol dialog box appears. Now I've already pre-filled the installation, location and tag strip numbers, but I want to start from a certain number. So I'm going to start with one, nice and easy, simple, and I'm going to click on OK. Now, I've got the option, I'll just move that across here so that we can see what's going on, to keep this one here. This one's already updated. I can keep all of them and don't ask or say no to skip to the next. So I can draw that component fence through, but I don't have to have a terminal jumper on every single rung of the wiring ladder. I can skip if I want to. If I show the edit dialog after each and do keep all, don't ask, It'll prompt me every time to update each terminal symbol. Now, if I had unticked that box, this dialog box would not come up. It would just put four of the same on each of the rungs of the ladder. So if I click on OK, each time it brings up the dialog until I've done all four. When I click on OK now, that's it, job done. So let's zoom in on the first two there. And as you can see, look, SS, EX, and then number one, number two, and it's 001 is the type, and it's giving you a number for each one, one, two, three, and four. So there's my terminal jumpers all set up going through the rungs of my wiring ladder. Okay, so we've now added our terminal connectors. They're there on the rungs of our ladder. What I've done here is I've done this deliberately. I've saved the drawing as another drawing. So we're now JIC wiring schematic two. OK, now there's a reason I've done that and you'll see why. When I go to the project and I right click and add the active drawing now, it'll ask me, do I want to apply the project default values to the drawing settings? Yes. And I'll update that. Now, what it's done there as well is it's automatically updated those in the database. So it now knows that it's got eight terminal connectors because this might be a drawing of a different circuit. 
So just be aware of that. So what I'll do there now is I'll right click, just sort out the properties, change that to sheet two so that we've got a proper numbering and naming structure there. And you'll notice again, 360 is updating and syncing in the background. So let's have a look now at our terminals. I'm just going to zoom in on those first two. So there you go. We've got SSEX1, SSEX2, and they're both type 001. Now, what I need to think about here is how I edit my components. I need to provide a jumper to go between that terminal connector and that terminal connector. How do I do that? Well, what I do is I go to Edit Components here, click on the flyout, and just lock that open. If I click on that little pin, it locks that flyout from that panel open. Now, remember, when you're adding this information to the drawing, you must think about the manufacturer's catalog details. Otherwise, information doesn't go into the drawing database, as we've talked about in previous exercises in previous videos. There is a jumper setting here, edit jumper. So that inserts or edits a jumper on a terminal. Now, we don't have any jumpers yet. So if I click there, it'll ask me to select a terminal or I can go and browse. Well, my terminal's right there. That's easy. I can select that one there and select the jumper terminals there. So I want that one there. So I'm going to add a jumper to those and then press enter to confirm. As soon as I do that, you'll see that there are jumpers now added. There's the location and so on, SSEX001. And as you can see, there's two jumpers there, but there's question marks right now. That's because we haven't linked them to anything else. There's no parent, sibling, parent-child relationship, hence the question marks. But what I can do now is I can go to lookup. And as soon as I do that, it goes and looks for the manufacturer's parts takes a few seconds. It's looking through the database now to find information for me. And it's searching through. And as you can see, there's obviously a lot to find there. It took a little bit of time. And you'll see there's a lot of those in the list. Can you see that there? There's a lot. I'm just going to go for a basic one. So let's go for that particular one there, made by AB. It's a jumper 10 pole jumper insulated. So I'm going to go for that one. And it gives you a rating jumper. I could go for any of these. I'm not too worried about an actual physical jumper or manufacturer right now because this is training. Obviously, if you were working to a particular project and a particular specification, you'd find the appropriate one as specified in the project documents. I'm going to OK that one. And that adds that information there. So we've now got a manufacturer and a catalog. We've got assembly, item. We could add it to the next one and so on. Let me show you something really, really cool about editing terminal jumpers, though. If I click on show, it actually goes into the drawing and I can actually pan around in this little bit here and look for my jumpers. How cool is that? So if I click on pan there, look, I can switch it off and on and I can pan. There's my two jumpers there. I can zoom in and out as well. So if I hit the minus button one step, there we are. So I can look around for my jumpers and search my drawing without actually having to come out of the edit terminal jumpers command. Isn't that cool? makes your life so much easier. It's just one of those little productivity tools within AutoCAD Electrical that just makes things work. It's very clever. I'm going to hide it now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to OK those jumper values. So what I've done there now is I've applied jumper values to those so that I can obviously jump those across. So what I might do now is add a wire. Now what I might do here is put O snap on so that I can snap to these. There we go, going from there. And I want to go to there like that. And there's my wire. It all snaps nice and neatly. Press enter. Job done. So I've connected my two terminals by way of the jumpers that are applied. But the important thing is that they've got manufacturer's details so that they go into the database and get picked up in the bill of materials.